All right, I know what you're thinking. Manny, you normally don't do cell phone camera reviews on your channel. I'm mostly focused on the big boys, the big cameras. It's not that I haven't tried. I'm trying to adjust to the times and try to do more cell phone content. The problem is, well, I buy the iPhone every year and it's just, it's the same thing every year. The camera is just not as good as it's hyped up to be and I end up scrapping all my ideas. So when OnePlus reached out to me with their new premium foldable with a triple Hasselblad camera system, and you guys know how I feel about Hasselblad. I told them to send it over, let me check it out. And yes, this is definitely worth highlighting. The, camera assist, the cameras are just our next level. I told OnePlus, hey, you want to make content on this phone? I'm going to use it in a professional studio environment. The main camera on the OnePlus Open has a 48 megapixel Sony stacked sensor with OIS and a wide aperture of f1.7. The telephoto camera has a 64 megapixel camera with OIS and with a 3x and a 6x optical zoom. For the majority of this shoot, I was using the 3x telephoto, which was giving me around a 70 millimeter focal length. Pretty good for these kind of portraits. It also has a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera that gives you a full frame equivalent of like a 14 millimeter field of view. So it's very, very wide. So we're shooting some pretty edgy. I think it's, these are pretty edgy portraits in the studio using the OnePlus Fold. All right, I got Rachel helping me out today, modeling. Uh, for this setup, I'm using uh, a LED hitting a red background. The, th the thing with this look is, one of the keys is these black V-flats, all right? Because I want some really deep shadows for this setup. So I've got two black V-flats on each side that basically just minimizes the light bouncing around in the studio because all my walls are white. So I need those shadows really nice and dark on her. My main light, I have, uh, I have a projection attachment, which is creating a, a very small, a circular light. I actually put a gold ball in here, look, one of these. So I want that beam even even smaller uh, just to cover a part of her face and her collarbone. And I shined her up with, uh, well, she shined herself up with coconut oil. So that's what we're working with. All right, let's take some shots. All right, look number two, this is one of my favorite setups that I use. So I'm using all constant lighting, LED up top. And so basically I'm using a three light setup here. One light is coming from above and it's illuminating the hair and the top of her body. So, and definitely without this light, we're gonna get those raccoon eyes. And you know what I'm saying? Like it's gonna be a lot, it's gonna be a lot of shadow. So I put a strip box here on the side with a grid. Grid is very important because I don't want the light to spill all over the background. I want it to be controlled. So this is illuminating her from the front and I'm gonna have her posing more toward the lighting so that we fill in all those shadows. And then for the background, I've got uh, the same thing, optical spot projection. I'm projecting a circle right behind her. And the, for this look, I want the outside of the circle to be dark. And for that to be dark, I had to move her away from the background so that I can keep any light spill off of the background. It's definitely a combination of distance from the background and just making sure we fill in those shadows on her so it, to, they can, you know, the light complements her and makes her look good.
Now using this camera in a professional setting, it was a lot easier than I initially expected. Now, when you switch to pro mode, you have access to all of the settings, like how you would on a big camera, right? So you have access to your ISO, your shutter speed, white balance, your exposure compensation, and even your focus. Now, being able to have access to these controls natively in the app makes all the difference, especially for the shoot that I did here. For the best possible results I need to control, I need to have control over my ISO and shutter speed, right? I need to make sure that my ISO is as low as possible so I can get a very clean image with, with very minimal noise and grain. You also gotta keep in mind that being able to control these settings allows the user a lot more creative freedom and the ability to use more advanced techniques, like for example, using a shutter drag technique, something that you could do on a bigger camera, you can do natively with this camera. Another really nice thing about these raw photos, and I can't overstate this, the photos didn't have that crunchy, over-sharpened look that we all love from smartphones, right? It's, it, it not only made editing much easier, but it just gives the photo a much more organic look to it, as if it was shot on a real camera. Give me, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that crunchy look. It just, it, it looks, it, it looks way, way too artificial. Not a fan. Outside of making this video, I have developed a relationship with Hasselblad and they're just not gonna throw their name on anything. So I wasn't surprised at how good the image quality was coming out of this camera. But the one thing that really caught me off guard was the, it's, it's not even on the spec sheet, it's called the Starker mode, okay? The zoom on this is so scary good that I, I don't even want, I don't want my blinds open at night at this point. Starting off on the ultra wide camera. Now you see that house halfway down the entire block? Well, I can zoom into it using the 12X zoom on this phone. It's absolute madness how much detail I was able to get while hand holding the camera. As you can see, it's not easy to keep steady, but wow, I was shook when I saw this. When it comes to video, you can shoot up to 4K 60 and you can film in Adobe Vision in 4K 30. Now, when you switch over to movie mode, now we're getting some of the good stuff because not only do you get more control over the camera settings, but you could also shoot in log natively without having to attach an SSD or an SD card to the phone. Now, shooting in log allows you to get a flatter looking image so that you can get more dynamic range. And also it allows for more flexibility when color grading in post. I'm that father that likes to make mini family videos wherever we go. I recently took my daughter to the aquarium and it's notoriously dark in there. I think that it handled those low light situations pretty nicely. For those who have never used a foldable like myself, the experience is unlike anything that I've ever used before, like multitasking. You can have two, even three screens open at the same time, which is probably not a good mix with my ADHD, but it is really freaking cool. Can we just appreciate the beautiful design of this phone? The camera bump on the back with the triple camera setup looks so fire. It reminds me of the face of a high-end watch. Now, what's it like actually using though? Now, the one thing that really caught me off guard was how light and thin it is. Like I always imagined the foldable to be just big and heavy and chunky, but the OnePlus Open, it's just, it's about the same weight of an iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now, when I opened up this foldable for the first time, a couple things came to my mind right away. First, how seamless the crease in the middle was. Now, if I were to, if you run your finger over the middle, it almost feels like it's just one flat screen, just one piece. This phone has dual Pro XDR displays. They're absolutely gorgeous. You get 120 Hertz refresh rate. It has about a 90% screen to body ratio. So it's mostly all screen. It can get incredibly bright with this 2800 nits of brightness and the phone is IPX4 waterproof rated. I took it out in the snow, taking pictures of my dog and no issues there. I wanna thank OnePlus for allowing me to showcase this phone and really push it to its limit on the photography side of things. The combination of the excellent image quality and being able to access pro mode for photography natively in the camera app really opens it up to be used in a more professional setting or just allow you to get shots that you wouldn't be able to get using the standard photo mode.
I definitely think that the portraits that I took with this phone really speak to that. Now, if you wanna check out the OnePlus Open for yourself, check out the link in the description. Talk to you later.